HomePod first impressions, and lessons to be learned from Twitter. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc, the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Find out more at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we are in Mac Voices Live. It is Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. We're on YouTube.com slash Mac Voices TV. We wish you were here with us. Um, you, too, could be in the chat room throwing in comments, questions, thoughts, ideas, or whatever else you want to throw into the chat room. Um, if you're not doing that tonight, a lot of topics tonight, a lot of different things to get to. So we're just going to jump right in and go around the room. Um, first up, uh, he beat out David Ginsburg uh, for my corner of the angels. Mr. Webb Bixby is here. Webb, good to have you. Chuck, good to be here. Thanks uh, thanks for letting me join the party again. I'm looking forward to tonight's show. Thank you. I'm just glad you recovered from all your celebrating uh, of the Kansas City Chiefs win over the weekend. There you go. Yep. So, yeah, that, we'll just leave that at there. We'll just leave it there. But but David was second, and so he gets the other corner. David, good to see you. Good to see you, Chuck. Uh, glad to be here. Um, a fun week to talk about all kinds of stuff. Seems like it's been uh, pretty steady with the uh, topics. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Mr. Fuccio is here with another informative background. He seems to be taking more time to create these backgrounds. Uh, well, it's to support one of the subjects we might be talking about tonight. And uh, I want to say, you know, congratulations to Webb. And I have a feeling we might be having a friendly adversarial competition in the next one or a couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> the I'll, I'll throw really out well. barbecue. I'll throw out Kansas City barbecue. I'll tell you right now. So. Okay. <laughs> and all can can Chuck and all his listeners and panelists come and come and join? Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a little grudge match in uh, football going here. This is going to be fun to watch. Jim Ray is here. This time he even got his uh, his AirPods Pro working. Jim, good to have you. AirPods Max. Max. I keep doing that. Max, yes. They're beyond Pro. <clears throat> but not quite next Ultra. Year I'll, next year, I was going to say, next year I'll get the Ultra. AirPods Ultra. I don't even want to know what that does to your ears. Uh, Jeff Gamut is uh, is with us again. Uh, he dodged the snow that I believe we were talking about last week. Jeff, good to have you. Uh, it's always great to be here. Uh, Jim, what happens when you get the pro is that not only do they play the music, but they compliment you and massage your ears. And Webb, I'm still stuck on Kansas City Barbecue. What time and where mm -hmm. I'm in. I the, mm -hmm. I don't care what the rest of the conversation was. I'm just in for the barbecue. Yes. My, my AirPods Pro do not do those things, Jeff. Well, that happens when you get the Ultras. Yeah, but you said Pro. Oh, well, I totally ruined my joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I can't, I can't get it right either, Jeff, so that's fine. Eric Bolden is here, and he was a little way turning his camera on because he was making sure that he could start migrating things to his new M2 Mac Mini. Yay! It's going to be a fun but very late evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you migrating from another Mac Mini? Yes. And what computer are you using to talk to us? Um, a different theoretical computer. An iPad. <laughs> uh, um, I think this is a laptop. I'm borrowing anything. <laughs> yes, it's a laptop. I'm not sure. There's a stack of hardware. Something is working. One of the screens have 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 people, and they move and talk. So <laughs> that's good. That's good. When I get to the point where I don't know what computer I'm using for the Zoom call I'm on, I'd be probably better. Uh, Call an ambulance or something. <laughs> well, I, I clean when I have to put two 
two of those big metal peanuts containers stacked one on top of the other and then put whatever I'm, I'm, I'm trying to type on above that, then it's time to clean my desk. I'm only one peanuts container up, so I still have a one, one container margin left. <laughs> So what's that? Six Mac Minis? Let's go. <laughs> how I'm many U sure. units is that? Yeah. I'm not sure how peanut cans got into this discussion, but yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. They're very Smith. stable. They work well. You know? Brittany Smith is here waving her arms like something's going on. I keep hitting the mute button to unmute, and then it doesn't work. I don't know what's going on with my system today. Oh, okay. Well, we can hear you now, so good to good. have you. Good. I hit it like three times. Good. Thanks so much for joining us. I um, hope, you, hope you're feeling a little better. Uh, we'll work on it. I'll try not to cough. <laughs> uh, well, if you got to do it, you got to do it. All right. Thanks. Last but absolutely not least, sneaking in under the wire, Mr. Guy Searle. Hey. Guy, good to have you. Yeah, I'm also having audio audio issues. Couldn't get the mic I wanted to use to work, so I guess I just had to step it down to this road this road mic instead it's it's a shame i had <sighs> lucky guy. you had a spare mic sitting around. <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> <laughs> i would have had to go into this other usb microphone that i also have connected yeah, guy guy had to go to his fourth fallback mic just yeah. to make sure that he can participate but this one has the rgbs oh jeez well the disco mic yeah uh, uh, couldn't get it to so work wrong. That is so wrong. <laughs> Story of my life. Uh, so there are a bunch of things here that, that I have on the agenda. Um, but I, I guess David was kind enough to remind me that we did, we did not have a HomePod discussion on Mac Voices Live last week because it had not been announced yet. It was announced Wednesday. Right. The next day. So it probably only seems appropriate that we just touch on that at least a little bit. Um, who here is excited about the new HomePod and is going to do an upgrade? I ordered one, so. Did you have? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's your current HomePod setup? Um, I have one of the original big HomePods, and I have one little one. So, and then I was hoping that I could uh, uh, pair the two, but evidently you can't do that between the first and second generation. <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. No, yeah. Th can't. Thanks, guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, just. Um, I was disappointed in that, but I'm still, yeah, I'll still use it. I'll just put it someplace else. Okay. Well, we, I'll, I'll be anxious to uh, to have you play with it a little bit and um, do a side by side comparison uh, with whatever you typically listen to to see because there's been so much discussion and you know people have been busting on it because I guess there are, what is it a couple fewer tweeters, yeah, and, and a couple fewer mics. And so, you know, it must not be as good. And yet the the initial reviews that I've seen say that it does seem to sound as good. So I don't know. Yeah, I just think probably the underlying technology inside of it is just so different that they can't do the pairing with the old, the, the original one. So that's oh, okay. I I would, no, I, that may be true, but I, I suspect it's, why bother? You know, that thing was introduced what, four years ago. Let's not look back. Let's just look forward and go from here. I, I, I don't I don't know enough about the internals or, you know, what the logic would be, yeah. um, except that if they aren't a perfect sonic match, you know, I'm sure that the stereo purists out there would have a fit. And so, you know, if if. If you Webb tried to do just what he said he, he was going to do, try to pair one with new with old or large with minis, you know you can you can just hear the purists screaming that this is not the way it should be. So yeah, uh, so uh, we have two and two, two of the original and then two of the minis, and I, I'm wondering, you know, maybe for Webb, uh, is there a limitation? Could you play two of them in the same room? I don't know if they would be synced or if you'd have. Uh, uh, you know, phase, uh, you know, and time delay issues, but uh, that might be an experiment worth trying. Yeah, I'll play with it. But like, like I said, this was not the uh, the sole reason why I bought it. It was one of the benefits. And if don't have it, don't have it. That's okay. So I got a different room to put it in. It's fine. Oh, I think 
the other thing that was a big topic was the fact that it's got 802.11n is there Wi-Fi and not the, and the the previous uh, model had the AC so there was a bit of a debate why Apple's choice of that and uh, you know they were talking about it last week we we're thinking that it's, it's it's something that they wanted to have a slower speed I don't I don't still haven't read anything as far as any logic to why they did that I have a hypothesis on that well, I thought you would Jeff. Go for it, Jeff. <laughs> Tin foil hat. Where's the hat? Okay. So with the uh, the OG HomePod, there's a, a longstanding problem where um, it isn't reliable on AC networks. Um, it can uh, it can drop connections. It can fail to uh, to uh, uh, let Siri work reliably. Uh, you can have music that that just drops out for several seconds and then comes back or the, anyhow there's there's a lot of audio related problems and the workaround has always been force the OG HomePod to an 802.11n network instead of an AC network and then it just works fine so my guess is that Apple's fix for that problem because they've never been able to fix it apparently was instead to do a workaround and just put an N chip in instead. Mm, makes sense. Um, the chat room is already contributing. Barry said he thinks he remembers reading or hearing that there was some, it had something to do the, the lack of ability to pair, excuse me, the lack of ability to pair had something to do with the inclusion of thread radio and matter. And that makes the gen two home pod not pairable with gen one. And I can, I mean, at the very least, I can see, parable or not, that if you're running Matter and then Gen 1 HomePods couldn't join in, that that too could add to customer frustration, and so they just decided to eliminate it. Yep. Just move forward. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Barry. That makes a lot of sense. Nobody else uh, getting a new HomePod? Really? I'm quite happy with my uh, two HomePod minis. Yeah, they they pump pod. out plenty of sound. I got my OG uh, two pair pair. I'm, I'm good with it. The other thing I think the other thing they do the two I think was smart is it does have a uh, removable power cord now and then the Gen two Gen two. Um, oh, I didn't know that. I, I didn't thought know. they didn't. I don't I, think. No, I thought the the original HomePod does because you know one of mine. No, 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 and the new one, one doesn't either. Oh, well, you can I take it out once. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, let's let's define what we mean. You know, one of mine fell, and the um, the the cord power cord fell. You know, you know uh, was out. And it's a little round thing. You know, and it just popped right back in. So, uh, to me, you know, that's uh, removable. You know, Jim, when you say no, what's your definition? What's this, how is your system configured? Well, I don't have one, but I just read online that people were like, "Come on, Apple, you know, this sucks." I, I'm I'm tapped out with my AirPods Max. No uh, more audio devices. Mark, for me you're for lucky your your HomePod wasn't trashed. Um, the cord is not a user removable piece, and uh, the fact that it popped out and you're able to pop it back in and uh, nothing was broken. That's uh, that you should have bought a lottery ticket that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with uh, Jeff Mark because mine don't. I mean, I haven't dropped them. I haven't pulled on them to see if something would pop out, but they are not. They are clearly not supposed to be removed. I mean, it's not like I looked at them and said, "Oh yeah, I can pull this out." It's like, I this I didn't I didn't have that thought either. Yeah, but uh, you know. Um, I'm just sharing my experience. I uh, I just, just, shared, just an article. shared an article that says it is removable in the new one. So I had read that it wasn't. It said that that, uh, that that they had a press uh, they held, had a press meeting at Apple headquarters in New York City, and bloggers got an opportunity to take a look at it, and it, it does it does indeed um, have the and even have a YouTube video showing it. Do you know, is it uh, like a USB-C connector? Is it something more stout? Do you... that, that I didn't get. I mean, I... I think the Mini has a USB-C connector, some other USB style. 
And then he has a yeah that has a USB uh, C connector, and then yeah, it's got yeah. the Apple the power adapter. Yeah. So, oh, I, Web, I forgot to ask what what color did you get? That's black. important. Black. black. Yeah, it just to match the other one that I'm not going to pair to. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, is it black? I mean, I think they call it midnight. And midnight. Yeah, I, did. I got yeah, the dark it's called one. Midnight. Yeah, yeah, the the dark colored yeah. one, fancy yeah. black. The the non white one. So yeah, yeah. Well, I read someplace that it was there. Were, apparently, it's supposed to be a very, very, very deep shade of blue that looks black for all intents and purposes, unless you really have it like in sunlight or something. So I, I don't know. It's I, called blau. Bla- is it a Yeah, blau. I'm kidding. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I found a Macworld article that says it's not removable. But... Yeah, I, I'm looking here too. Yeah. So I guess we'll find out what people have in their hands. Yeah. Web, <laughs> Web, that's going to be the big question is, forget what it sounds like. Is the cable yeah. removable? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't really hard and let us know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, like I, I get here like February 3rd or something like that, or early part of February. So, so maybe I'll do the unboxing for you guys. There you go. Yeah. Unlike Eric, who just couldn't wait. I tried. <laughs> I really tried. <laughs> uh, anymore. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find local doctors who take your insurance at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. You're trying to find a cause for your symptoms, that pain in your back or the sore foot. Whatever it is, it's annoying and concerning. You stumble down a social media rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. There are better ways to get the answers you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Mac Voices. ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. Thanks to ZocDoc for their support of Mac Voices. So I want to hit one big topic here. Um, because I think it's it's a learning opportunity and it's a, an opportunity to make a point. So I want everybody to take a deep breath, all right, and just let's not, not go off and go crazy. But I feel like there's some lessons to learn and not the obvious ones from the, the current Twitter situation, okay, of them ref- now canceling support for third-party applications and all and watching the reaction around that and watching even before this, what's happening. We've talked a lot here about some of the dangers of building your reputation, your platform, your communication with your audience on one of these third-party social networks. And I think what we're seeing right now is just an exercise in exactly why that is not a good idea. And Jeff, I think you and I had had a little bit of a conversation offline about this. Um, Just, you know, we all... We all have have audiences on Twitter, and now we're having to try to migrate those audiences or encourage them to move over to other social networks if Twitter were to go down completely. Mm-hmm. Um, we also, I, I believe it was on on this show, but I know in the gift guides, you know, we've talked about the wisdom of buying your own domain name and having that for email purposes, but maybe also now we may be seeing that it might be a good idea to have a personal website of some kind if you have a, if you're in a situation where you want to have audiences um and then coincidentally um uh, Dave Hamilton um and Shannon Jean on their business brain podcast last week were talking about having your own name domains 
and I'm not telling any tales out of school because Dave said it on the show, that he paid $1,000 for his to get DaveHamilton.com. Does that mean there must have been another Dave Hamilton he had to buy it from? Uh, must have think, been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were doing some kind of bidding, I think, or 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 whatever. Yeah, um, but I'm not but sure I, guess, I have enough money to buy my first and last name domain. Well, yeah, Brett, you are a problem. <laughs> Took a little common. You know, yeah, I I bought um, uh, jgamut.com, jeffgamut.com, Jeffarama. Uh, I, I think I have a couple other variations on my name that I bought a long time ago. And yeah, domains are cheap. If it's hosting, it costs you a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I if wanted you, to make yeah. sure that I had my domains before anyone else could get them. E- even though you'd think, ah, oh, Jeff Gamut, there can't be a lot of them out there. But he's a criminal, right? He's, isn't he's, there, told us that story, right? There's another Jeff Gamut who's a criminal or a low life of some sort. Th- there, there's another Jeff Gamut that has had issues with the law and, uh, and lives in, in Colorado as well. Um, so that's been an issue for me occasionally, but there's also, uh, a Jeff Gamut who has like, uh, like a, uh, uh, like a logging business or something, and another one that has like a like a, a gym or some sort of fitness business, and um, and I didn't know about those at the time that I bought all my domains, but later on I found out, and I was really glad that I snatched up my <laughs> my name and variations early on so that uh, it, it wouldn't be a problem later. Yeah, I, I, uh, I feel like. All that sort sort of rolled together in my mind. That just we we need to just point out to folks that you know this may be something you want to think about. And the guy's point, um, I mean, guy, you know, if if you aren't ready to host your domain somewhere, you can park it relatively yeah. cheaply um, mm-hmm. and just have it redirect somewhere if you want or not. Just you know, have it's a, what, have just a, just a have the domain. Region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I, well, uh, for example, me... a long, long time ago, uh, I did a series of articles at MyMac.com on using, for the people that remember this, iWeb, but not making it yeah. look like iWeb. Mm-hmm. And so I got the domain MacParrot.com, and I did everything there. And then when I got done with the article and the next time the billing cycle came up, it was like, uh, do I really want this? Nah, and I let it go. And then a, a few years later, when it was like, yeah, you know what? I think I'd like to have MacParrot.com again. It was bought by someone else. And it sits there with just a generic, you know, g- generic little thing on it when you go to MacParrot.com. And um, the hosting company that I currently use has offered to negotiate on my behalf for $100 on top of whatever it would cost me to get the domain. And it was like, yeah, vertshark.com is looking better and better all the time. And so that was where I went. Even though I'd still like to have macparrot.com, but I'm not I'm not spending a fortune to get that. I wonder yeah. where macparrot came from. Now, now I know. Yeah. Tim, I'm sorry, you've been trying to get in. Go for it. Well, I just want to point out that owning your own domain name does not mean for sure you're free and clear for for now and forever because most people are going to find you by Google. What if Google decided, you know, we're not going to direct to you? And you might say, well, that's ridiculous, but it does and can happen. Um, what if YouTube, you know, you got some strikes, Chuck? Um, and you could say, well, that's not unlikely. But the point is that, you know, this is sort of a general problem that everybody has these days. We're all susceptible to giant corporations that could make arbitrary decisions, possibly mistakes that you can't review, can't be reviewed by a court or even a person. Um, so I, you know, and I don't know what the answer is. I'm not saying you shouldn't get a domain name. I'm just saying that that doesn't necessarily, you know, solve the problem of i you know i can't be delisted or you know or but, you know that sort of thing but just because google doesn't like put you in their results doesn't mean people can't find you at that address i mean the idea well, certainly of your own domain if you're a your business email, 
If you're a business and you can't be found in Google, you don't but, exist. But <laughs> full stop. But you still have it and you can still do other things. Like it is a place that someone can still direct to and find your stuff. It is email address and website domain are the most robust. If I hate my server, I can move it to somewhere else. I hate my hosting. I can move it to somewhere else. Email, same thing. You can get, you know, that that's even more likely, you know, you could get blacklisted. And no one will ever see your email. And that is something you have to be very careful about with email. But it's not as and arbitrary. The reasons that that it's happens totally, is yeah, nowhere you could wind near up being as uh, arbitrary uh, as, uh, guess what? No more TikTok. Like, uh, they are well, the yeah, most Yeah, it's kind of worse because if TikTok goes away, everybody's going to know to look around. But if only you go away, people will just be like, oh, well, I forgot Brittany even exists. Um, so, you know, everybody, you know, if Twitter goes away completely. Well, everybody's going to know I can't look for people on Twitter anymore. And, I, you know, if I really want to find somebody, I better, I, I better look somewhere else. I, I'm the not problem. saying you shouldn't have your own domain. I, I, I think I said that two or three times. I just wanted to, you know, say that. You know, it's not just a Twitter problem or a particular API problem or, you know, same thing in the App Store. Apple can kick you out of the App Store and you no longer have a business. So, I do feel like it, they're ranked, though, like in terms of things that like if you want to if you actively want to find me. Right. Like, yeah, Twitter may go away. Like other social platforms may go away. But you could still have a presence. Is it harder to find you? How if, would I actively find you if you weren't on a search engine? Jim, I think I think we may be having two conversations here. Um, yeah. I, I think one conversation, and, and you're not wrong. I think one conversation is building our platforms, building the content and all on one of those one of the services that is run by somebody else and is outside of your control. The other is to build the build it on something that at least have you you have a little more control over. And to to your point, if I, Britain, Britt, I know that you said you don't have BrittanySmith.com, dot com, but you, uh, you you'd have a DD Liberator. Okay, so she can always put that on business cards. She can she can put it in text messages. She can, you know, plaster it on on the walls if she wants to, and that even if Google, you know, ignores her, she can. I can still go and find her at her website, and I think that's kind of the point here. But all the things you're talking about are absolutely possible, but they just they feel a whole lot, a lot, a whole lot less likely. And yeah, there's I mean, no such thing as a perfect solution, but yeah. there are ones that, as Chuck said, you've got more control over. The more control part, that's what really matters here. If if you're putting all of your content on Twitter and then Twitter goes away, which seems more plausible every single day, all of your content is gone. That's it. It's just gone. If you, if you have your content somewhere where you have more control over it, your own uh, website with a, with a URL that you have chosen – as the different services come and go, you just keep pointing from the services back to your content on your site. And your content remains as all of these services just kind of wash up on shore and then get pulled back out of the ocean and then disappear again. And uh, and to me, that's where the value is. And yes, of course, you can have problems with Google and uh, and email servers and all that. But at least you have a, a place where your content has a much higher likelihood of existing as social networks come and go. A further point to that is don't rely on having all of your content on these various services and being able to get it back if it goes away. You should have backups, hard physical backups under your complete control on your own computer. Like for example, I've got a eight gigabyte drive that I put all of my video on that's completed and actually in, in its raw form as well. And at the same time, I back that up with an online service that uh, uh, backs up my entire system. So if, if my computer blows up or, or the house burns down within a relatively short amount of time, I can be back up and running like it never happened. 
including all of my audio and all of my video and, and everything else that I've created for the last 10 to 15 years. And, and I've, I don't have it quite as extensive guy. I haven't kept the raw, you know, the raw footage, but I have all the, the finished shows archived Yep. Um, but for that very reason. I mean, yeah, I've, I, I upload the videos to Facebook. I upload the videos to YouTube and I upload the videos to Vimeo, but I still keep hard copies of every, well, not hard copies, local copies of yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it just, you never know. And I, would I want to rebuild all that, you know, that infrastructure? Of course not. But it's better than not being able to rebuild the infrastructure. At all, right. Yeah, yeah. At Voices is on Vimeo? Yeah. I did not know that. Well, get over there and start watching. I will. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, I started that a long time ago, you know, for the for the very reason that I didn't know what was going to happen with YouTube, and you know, you want to make sure. And we, you know, you've seen you've seen different things. Your your point about strikes. I mean, they've gotten pretty aggressive on things now. I'm like I've, I think a lot of content creators. I'm very careful not to use any copyright copyrighted music. Once in a while, something will sneak in in the background somewhere that I don't even know is there, and I'll get a nasty little note. It's like, oh, okay, got to, you know, drop the audio out or do something to prevent uh, prevent that. So yeah, I was watching, I was watching a video of a guy that vlogs mostly in Scotland, and he did a, you know, bars of Edinburgh, and he goes into a bar, and he's like, "Sorry, I, could, I had to turn off the audio because they were playing copyrighted music." <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, again, it's, you know, this, frankly, I got into a longer discussion than I thought, but I just think it's, this is a good, perfect lesson to, you know, say that if you've got followers now on Twitter and they're looking for you, you've got to go back on Twitter. Even if you don't want to be there, you've got to go back on there and say, hey, I'm now principally going to be on Mastodon or micro.blog <clears throat> or wherever. Come on over and follow me there. It sounds like there's an excellent chance that. Twitter will not show your followers that post. There has yes. been question over that too. It may all depend on how you uh, how you author it. You know, if you include a hard link, that's the thing I hear the most that they get. Uh, you know, well, I, I'm not even talking about that. I'm seeing lots of people saying that they're not seeing most of the content of people they follow. Period. Well, not not just well, that's okay, but that's, to other that's, services, but just period. They're not yeah, seeing that's a, that's a that's a separate issue than saying that if you say I'm moving to Mastodon at this account. Uh, oh, well, I I I meant to. You're right. You, what I said could be interpreted as that. I just meant anything you post on Twitter, your followers may not see. Is what sure. I'm hearing. I I suspect that because I've noticed uh, in. About the past five days, a dramatic drop off in, in the number of you know views or interactions with stuff, and you know it's not that I've changed the character, the sort of things that I post, or the times at which I post them, but um, yeah, I've 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 heard this. Ruber talked about it uh, a couple of days ago. This panel obviously has some strong feelings about what's been going on at Twitter, and that conversation continues in the next edition of Mac Voices with even more passion and more lessons to be learned. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.